In very early spring, I noticed a groundhog had taken up residence underneath our shed. She had probably just moved out of hibernation in the last few weeks in a nearby forest and was drawn to my yard because of the abundance of vegetation to eat and a fantastic den site underneath my shed. She proceeded to have three babies and I got to watch them grow over the coming weeks and saw a lot of really amazing behavior. So today what I wanna do is share the humble beginnings of a new groundhog family and discuss some things to know about groundhogs ranging from where they live, what they like to eat, what kind of behaviors they do, including social and territorial behaviors. So let's burrow into the world of groundhogs, a rodent herbivore also widely known as the woodchuck. The core habitat of a groundhog is in fields and grassy slopes, in open spaces at the edges of forest. They're not really much of a forest creature, although it's not uncommon for groundhogs to hibernate in the forest with burrows dug into the side of hills protected from winter flooding. When they emerge in late winter or early spring, they move to a more open landscape that has access to lots of vegetation. The exact timing when groundhogs emerge from hibernation correlates very closely with warmer temperatures, and this is the reason why they're often looked upon as the predictors of spring. There are two main things that groundhogs need in order to establish a territory. The first is there needs to be some sort of den site where they can either dig underground or go underneath protected structures like sheds and decks. The main entrance to groundhog dens are often quite obvious because of the significant sand or soil thrown out at the entrance. Groundhogs will commonly dig systems of burrows with as many as 10 different entrances and multiple chambers underground. But in the case of my groundhogs, the whole area had very rocky and heavy clay soil, so they weren't doing much digging and instead were relying on the cover that was already there. There was a main entrance at the front that could be seen in the gravel substrate, and there were also at least one or two entrances on the side that they would frequently use. It's also really common for groundhogs to have little escape holes dug around their territory, so if they ever need to escape a predator, they can very easily get underground. And those are often more subtle, they might just look like a hole in the ground, but won't necessarily have mounds of soil around them. Groundhogs are also very fond of large rocks, and will frequently have hiding spots underneath. They will also climb up on top of rocks in order to get a good view, and can even climb trees for this same reason. The other thing groundhogs need for a successful territory is access to food. Groundhogs are large ground squirrels that follow an herbivore diet and rely very heavily on tender green plants like clovers, alfalfa, and other low-growing herbaceous plants. One of the main ways that groundhogs learn about their world is by chewing. They chew grapevines, they chew grass, they chew plastic, they'll chew on metal fencing, they will chew on everything, but they're particularly fond of the kinds of vegetables that a lot of people like to grow in their gardens, and they have very big appetites, so many groundhogs have caused a tremendous amount of problems for gardeners and farmers because pretty much if it's green and it's tender, there's a very high likelihood that groundhogs will like to eat it. Another core behavioral characteristic of groundhogs is vigilance. Groundhogs, especially baby groundhogs, are very vulnerable mammals that are susceptible to lots of different types of predators like domestic cats and dogs, weasels, coyotes, foxes, hawks, and eagles. And the way that groundhogs survive is by having really sharp awareness and an underground escape route close by whenever they detect predators. So they spend a lot of time just watching and listening, and in places where there are higher populations of groundhogs, they will also do a fair bit of communication between each other with alarm calls, including whistling sounds. And this is why one of the other names for groundhogs is actually a whistle pig, because they make these whistling sounds, and a lot of the sounds they make are done for the purpose of predator evasion. The baby groundhogs are quite social with each other. They have an active family life that involves touch with their hands and a greeting ritual that's done with the nose. But eventually, in order to be successful in life, groundhogs will need to establish some kind of territory. And you can see that even at this age, they're already starting to establish that territorial nature with gestures of aggression showing around space. Groundhogs are herbivores. They eat a lot of vegetation 
And so they need to have a large enough territory to be able to provide for themselves. And if it's a female especially, they need to be able to provide for themselves through the pregnancy and child rearing phase, which is what we're seeing right here. And so as a result of that, groundhogs can be quite territorial. And as adults, they tend to be a little bit solitary in their family life. Overall, groundhogs are incredibly fun to watch and observe. If you ever get a chance to spend some time with a family of groundhogs, I highly recommend it. They're cautious enough that they will really challenge your observation skills and give you lots of really fascinating behaviors to look at. They're really cute animals, but they're also common enough that even average people really do have a good shot of being able to spend some quality time with groundhogs. If you give them their space and you be respectful and watch from a distance, you can get that insider's view of these amazing creatures as they fulfill their role in nature.